Forget flashy rockets. How Japan's tiny space program became a giant in asteroid mining. Here's how they did it. Japan has followed a distinct route through the decades of interstellar innovation, from launching the smallest orbital rockets in the world to the most sophisticated research facility in space to the future of asteroid mining. This is the history of space exploration by Japan. Today we will explore the reason of Japan's incredible program. But before starting the video, if you are new to our channel, do subscribe it and press the bell icon so you will never miss an update in the future. Let's dive into the video. It may surprise you to learn that Japan has been engaged in space exploration since the mid-1950s, but the Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency, or JAXA as it is currently known, was only established in 2003. In actuality, Japan had three distinct space programs before JXA. The National Aerospace Laboratory and National Space Development Agency of Japan are housed under the Institute of Space and Astronautical Science. In order to obtain more focused funding for space exploration from the Japanese government and to enable more centralized and organized space exploration endeavors, the three universities combined in 2003. This story should truly start in Japan after World War II. Japan is currently forbidden from creating any new technology that could be connected to military use as part of their submission to the United States, which naturally includes the majority of the technology used in space research. Japan is still able to advance in its own manner despite this restriction, and by the middle of the 1950s, they had the foundations of a space research program. The University of Tokyo's Institute of Industrial Science originally housed a research division that later became the Institute of Space and Astronautical Science. Hideo Otokawa, who is currently regarded by Japanese media as the father of Japan's space program, served as this group's leader. The global political scene is rapidly shifting at the same time. The United States changes the Japanese military limits to permit an armed forces focused on self-defense as they grow increasingly concerned about the Soviet Union's nuclear threat. The final disclaimer is that Japan is still barred from creating offensive weaponry. In essence, this means that although the Japanese are unable to produce ballistic missiles, they are able to produce unguided rockets. The Institute of Space and Astronautical Science truly shines in this situation. They begin by creating tiny solid-fueled rockets. Their initial model is referred to as the penciled rocket due to its similar size and shape. This rocket measures only 23 centimeters in length and 1.8 centimeter in diameter. Although it is essentially the same model rocket you can purchase at any hobby shop nowadays, the Japanese saw this as a modest first step towards greatness in 1955. The tiny rocket was next. While it was much larger than a pencil, it was still just 120 cm long and 8 cm in diameter. Even so, it was large enough to launch a few scientific instruments into space, which was a significant advancement for the future. This soon resulted in the creation of the rocket-sounding Kappa systems. These rockets are powered by solid fuel and are intended to explore the uppermost layers of Earth's atmosphere. The Japanese aim to deliver their instrument payload as close to the edge of space as possible, at a height of 60 to 100 kilometers. It took several tries to get everything just right. Many of the original Kappa designs just blew up when they were ignited. Kappa 6 was the first design to be genuinely successful. 5.4 meters long and 25 centimeters in diameter at this time. In 1958, the K6 achieved a 60 kilometer altitude using a novel solid propellant of the composite kind. These rockets are always launched at an angle, as you may have noticed. In a moment, we'll discuss that. The first phase of the program concluded with the launch of Kappa 8, a two-stage sounding rocket that measured 40 centimeters in diameter and 11 meters in length. It carried a research payload as high as 160 kilometers into space. A scientific payload on the K-8 rocket made history in September 1960 by successfully measuring the density at that altitude and studying the Earth's ionosphere. The world was beginning to notice Japan's accomplishments. The 1960s space race saw the American and Soviet programs focus on crewed space flight and satellite deployment, while Japan focused on scientific research and observation in the upper atmosphere. Japan's Lambda series of rockets, a scaled-up version of solid propellant sounding rockets, reached high into the outer atmosphere and even deployed a payload into Earth orbit. However, Japan's limitations under the post-war constitution meant they had no offensive weapon technology and no guidance system on their rockets. To compensate, Japanese engineers pointed their rocket diagonally from the ground, achieving the same arc without steering in flight. 
the Japanese space program faced four failed attempts at satellite deployment before successfully deploying Osumi in 1970, making Japan the fourth nation to successfully deploy an orbital satellite. This allowed Japan to focus on space science and research projects, studying atmospheric science, weather, climate patterns, magnetic fields, and X-ray astronomy. In the 1980s, Japan's space program launched Sakigake and Susi, the first spacecraft to escape Earth's gravity and deploy deep space probes. However, the early 1990s were marked by economic struggles for Japan. During the last decade, Japan contributed significantly to the International Space Station ISS with their Kibo module, the largest research outpost. This three-part research outpost became the single largest module and the most advanced scientific laboratory in outer space. The main pressurized module contains 10 scientific experiment racks studying cell biology, microgravity, Earth's atmosphere, global weather, cosmic rays, and laser communications. The exposed facility, the Terrace, allows astronauts to spacewalk out onto the module and manage experiments. The Kibo module allows for the deployment of small cube satellites to the International Space Station ISS. Japan also contributed to the ISS through the HTV supply ship which carried pressurized and unpressurized cargo and was used to remove waste. The HTV was launched using the JAXA H2 rocket, a liquid hydrogen fueled medium lift vehicle. It has been suggested before and probably has again that the first trillionaire will be the one to discover how to mine an asteroid. Japan is a leader in the industry when it comes to recovering new resources from asteroids. Following the trend of accepting constraints, the Japanese decided to employ their considerable robotics competence in their space program rather than pursue spectacular programs like moon bases, Mars rovers, or primitive space travel. The Hayabusa mission, launched in 2005, was the first vehicle to touch an asteroid and return home with a sample. The spacecraft, launched on a Japanese M-series rocket, was intended to deploy a secondary robotic lander named Minerva. However, it missed due to the weak gravitational attraction of the asteroid. In 2014, Japan launched the Hayabusa 2 mission, a larger payload with a destination on Ryuku, a carbonaceous asteroid believed to preserve ancient material. The mission successfully left behind a rover with two robots named Hibo and Owl, which hopped on the asteroid surface. The Japanese space program plans to launch a robotic space probe to explore the Martian moons, Phobos, in 2026. The probe will make at least one landing to retrieve at least 10 grams of sample material. The probe will then conduct an orbital observation on the second moon of Mars and send a return module back to Earth by 2031. This mission is expected to be successful and return the material to Earth sooner. I hope you liked the video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and check out the video here lined up for you. You will definitely find it amazing.